So you've been thinking about getting into cameras for a while and um, you've kind of looked around and you've looked at things like DSLRs and mirrorless cameras and you've looked at the compact side of it and then you've kind of struggled because there's so much variety out there of different cameras that do different things with different lenses and so on and it's very 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 difficult to kind of choose especially when you're deciding on a new camera for maybe a new hobby or maybe something that you just want to take with you to different places to document your life really and they can be a very expensive purchase especially if you're just going to use it kind of on sunny days and holidays but if you're going to turn it into a hobby it's still very expensive to get started when you're buying a brand new camera. Now we're going to take a look at one camera that I think is possibly the only camera that you will need for the foreseeable future if you are either starting off or you want a general use camera or you want one that can do both photos and video as well. And you're also looking at a camera that's not going to basically make you look like a, an out and out amateur when you're out and about in different towns and cities taking pictures or in the countryside or even going to things like air shows and taking photographs of low flying planes etc and this camera is this it's a panasonic lumix fz a lot of the kind of camera aficionados out there will say well it's not really a, a dslr and it's been out for a while and it hasn't really seen any major updates in that length of time and that'll be completely correct and the reason it's been out for a long time is because it's a hard camera to beat now let me explain the differences between this and a DSLR or even the older SLR style cameras where you can interchange the lenses is the fact that this is a bridge camera it's basically got a 25 to 600 zoom already on the camera. Now I'm not going to go too much into the specifications of this camera because this is just an introduction to this camera and to show you why I think that this is one of the best cameras out there. Now if you turn the camera on the controls are quite easy to use you can actually see the zoom working there and it's pretty decent because you can get very very close with this and it's also got a macro feature on it which is very very good now this camera has been out since 2015 now the general specs of this camera seems to point it more towards video now that's not a bad thing in this day and age where a lot of people are videoing things for YouTube and other kind of social media apps. They're also videoing their life, etc. and, you know, parties and events. Something that can capture video in really good quality is always a boon. This camera can capture video at 4K, which is possibly a lot more if you're going to edit it then most PCs can handle without a powerful graphics card to help push 4k video down through your editing suite so this can probably outdo at the moment a lot of home computers for editing but you can use normal high definition which is very good which is easily editable on most computers going back probably the last eight to ten years and you will be able to edit this quite nicely using HD. Now this camera itself is not a, a small compact body it looks like a standard DSLR and for most people who are going to see you out and about with this taking photographs either through its eyepiece or its articulated viewfinder here or its little video window here will probably think that this is a DSLR because most people who are not into cameras don't really know and the good thing about this camera is it does have an articulated LCD screen here so you can actually face it the other way if you want to video yourself etc so that's that's kind of a boon in this time and day and age really because most people will be doing some form of 
selfie with the camera, which is quite easy to do. Now it's not a heavy camera, so it is relatively portable, but it's not as portable as a compact camera. The, the video on this is very good quality for the size of the sensor, and the sensor on this has been upgraded since the bigger brother of this camera came out, the 1000 and the 2000. So the sensor on this is technically a better sensor, even though it has less megapixels, which we'll come to in a moment, in comparison to its bigger brothers for taking stills. Now, the still capability of this camera is 12 megapixels, and that might not seem a lot when you consider you know, the average kind of compact camera ranges, kind of 24 megapixels, 20 megapixels and so on and upwards, where you, you're probably going to think that it's not enough. But megapixels aren't everything, which we'll cover as we go along in this series. 12 megapixels on this camera is more than you will ever possibly need for printing out your photos, to put in a photo album, or to send it via email, or to post it online, because most content gets kind of compressed down to around about high def quality maximum. And that's not 2K, that, that's not what you call H, full HD. So you, you're talking standard definition. So really, so megapixels don't matter a lot on this camera or matter a lot for most people because the quality of this camera is very very good. It also has something that's called 4K burst. So when you're not putting it in standard mode on this camera to just to take your normal shots through the trigger, you can actually take a burst by holding the trigger down, set it to 4K burst and it will take a range of pictures almost instantly so if you're taking a picture of somebody on portrait or a moving vehicle or something, it will take a number of pictures very, very quickly. And then you can edit the picture or scroll through the picture you want and select the photograph that you think is the best one. So it will burst. But that's roughly 8 megapixel on photo size because it's using 4K, which 4K kind of resolves to about 8 megapixels in size. Now. That feature is very good because it's very quick. It is very quick at manipulating those images. And the camera itself, you wouldn't really know once you got the pictures up what camera that it was taken on because if you take a good picture on one camera, let's say uh, a Nikon or its bigger brother or a Sony and so on, once you view the picture, you're never gonna know. Now, what makes this camera really good and an upgrade in a way to the bigger brother of this model is the fact that it has a touch sensitive screen. It's not just a button orientated or scroll wheel orientated selection feature, it is touch sensitive, which the other cameras don't have in the kind of bigger brother range to this. It is, as you expect, auto-focusing. It is, as you expect, very quick. It's a mirrorless camera, so there is no flickable shutter inside, which again we'll come to a little bit later. So it, you're basically seeing an image in the viewfinder, if you use the viewfinder instead of the screen, of what the sensor is seeing, rather than a direct reflection or refraction that a normal mirror camera, DSLR camera, would actually show you. Now, for normal everyday kind of use, you wouldn't know any difference. And, you know, there's a lot of people who would originally say that going from a DSLR with its mirror-based system to one of these, which is literally a small LCD inside of here, um, they can tell the difference. But after you've used it for about 20 minutes or so, you wouldn't know any difference because you just adjust to it and you get used to it and there's no real downside to using that. The other features of this camera is the fact that it's got a bigger grip than its predecessor which makes it more comfortable. It has your telephoto zoom on here so you can actually use it at the side of the camera as well as well as your wide and zoom on your trigger near your shutter button or what would be a standard shutter button. It also has a 
poppable flash which is in here which will flick up manually and it also has very similar if not exactly the same kind of standard settings as most cameras such as manual override it's got automatic everything it's got panoramic sports mode and it's all customizable as well as well as a video mode so you can use it as a video camera for up to 29 minutes and 59 seconds per shot so continue shooting for each section that you're videoing which to be honest is more than enough for most people the other ideal thing about this camera which most cameras don't have especially bridge cameras and even some medium end or medium range dslrs is a microphone jack a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack which will allow you to plug in wireless microphones extendable microphones such as lapel mics or even boom mics which can sit on top of the camera and that will give you a little bit more range especially if you're using a powered mic the microphone on this is towards the back of the camera so when you're using the zoom in video mode the the motor noise doesn't intrude which is a downside for a lot of cameras including camcorders you can actually hear the motor noise when you use the zoom lens on it everything about this camera just fits just right it's a good everyday workhorse camera it's good enough for portraits landscapes faster moving things like cars and airplanes and so on it's good for running and jogging photos or motorcycling or pedal bike photos anything that moves it's very decent with that and you can get some very good results now that's just a brief kind of overview of this camera because if you want to look at the specs go on the Panasonic website and it details the specs but the specs aren't everything a year on from buying this I wasn't intending on buying this because I've got a Fujifilm bridge camera which I've had for a long time which is higher megapixels than this it doesn't do 4k but it does high def video and I've been very happy with it but I really wanted something that did ultra high def video such as 4k and um, this kind of fell into the category without going down the route of another bulky DSLR with lots of lenses and so on and this is an ideal camera for most use in fact I haven't really found a use that I cannot put this camera to and it, that's even compared to some medium and high-end Nikon cameras Samsung cameras and Sony cameras as well and to be honest this would be my go-to camera if I was traveling because it's literally all in one you don't have to do a lot with this camera you just literally take it out put it in automatic point and shoot if you want to or take it out use the manual mode set everything up the way you want it and then shoot your photos so I don't have any real bad sides to say about this camera and one thing this camera has over some medium end DSLRs is that it's weatherproofed now a lot of the lower range or the budget range if you can call them that because they're still very expensive DSLRs aren't weatherproof or dust proof or shower proof where this one is and that makes a lot of difference especially if you are suddenly caught out in a bit of a shower or you're on the beach and there's a bit of sandstorm kicking up and so on and this camera is protected from that there it's not waterproof nothing is but it's water resistant and dust resistant and it's generally been weather proofed to quite a large extent and i haven't found any problems with using this out in rain showers and so on so overall this camera is an amazing piece of kit for a camera that hasn't changed since 2015 it's been the same and it's a fantastic seller and there's good reasons for that it's good on a tripod it has your standard mount for a tripod which you screw into the bottom um, get an adjustable one because some of them actually get in the way of the SD card and the rechargeable battery holder here and the other thing which I forgot to mention which I will it comes with a plug-in charger for the battery and it's also 
a USB charger and they're fairly inexpensive to buy maybe a Duracell charger and second battery which you can plug into your car and charge when you're going somewhere as I do on my motorbike as well as my car because it's convenient just to leave it plugged in and charged up so it's always ready to go. So overall this camera from Lumix, it's Panasonic, is one of the best, if not the best, all-rounder camera that you can buy. That's a bridge camera that looks like a DSLR, a bridge camera that performs as good as most budget to medium-end DSLRs, and it has a lot of features on board that DSLRs don't have, which we'll cover in a later video. So I'm just gonna leave you with a few shots so you can see what it's all about. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell and you can follow me on a journey through these cameras from literally from beginners with no technical jargon through to the technical side of these cameras as we go. So thanks a lot and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye.